Two of my favorite things are hamburgers and Italian sub sandwiches. Today, I'm going to mash that up a bit. That's right. I'm going to take the best parts of the hamburger and the best parts of the Italian sub sandwich and put them together to make an Italian sub burger today. It's not super complicated, but it is going to be delicious. So let's get started. So what I'm starting with here is a pound of 80-20 ground beef. To that, I'm going to add a half pound of mild Italian sausage. Now, this isn't going to be a pound and a half burger, I don't think. So whatever's left over, I'm going to use to make meatballs. But I want to get this all mixed up here, really incorporated. We're not going to really add any other seasoning to this meat on the inside because that Italian sausage is going to give it a lot of flavor in there. Now, because we're using some ground pork product here, we're going to be making sure we cook this to a 160 degree internal when we make the burger. If it was a whole piece of pork, like a pork loin or pork chop, we could take it to 145, which are the new USDA guidelines. But when you're dealing with ground pork, it's best to take it to 160. You can see all those different colors in there as that pork mixes in with the ground beef. So there's our meat mixture. Let's form our sort of special hamburger patty. So I've got some wax paper laid out on my cutting board here, and I'm just gonna plop a good amount of meat down there. Now what I'm going to do is I want to form this into sort of a long patty because it's going to fit inside a French roll. That's going to be our bun today. So we want to make it even. It'll probably shrink a little bit as we cook it. Don't want to make it too thick or too thin. That's looking good. I'm going to hit this with a little bit of salt and pepper on the outside. Then we're going to turn this over, hit the other side. We're going to set that in the refrigerator to kind of meld all together while we get working on our bun. All right, the first step to making our bun is making a garlic butter that's going to go on it because this is going to be a garlic bread hamburger bun. So I'm starting with a couple tablespoons of butter. I'm going to add just a splash of olive oil, not that much, well, maybe a teaspoon of minced garlic, and some Italian seasoning. This is just that sort of boxed Italian seasoning you can get in the spice aisle. Put a good amount in there. If you want, you could just put basil and oregano, but I like this mixture. Now I'm just going to mix this all together. There's our Italian garlic butter that we're going to put on our bun. So let's get our bun out. What we're going to be using today for our bun is a standard French roll. It's about a six or seven inch one. I'm going to take this Italian garlic butter and I'm just going to spread it on these halves. This is similar to a video I did recently on grilled herbed garlic bread. Similar principle to what we're going to do here. We want really flavorful bread for our bun. Get a good coating on both of these. What we're going to do to this is we're going to reassemble it, wrap it in foil. That is ready. What we're going to be doing when we take it out to the grill is we're going to put it on just like this in the foil so that it sort of heats up and all that butter and everything melts into the bread. Then just before we're ready to assemble our burger, we're going to take it out of the foil and grill those halves to crisp up the inside of that bun, just like toasting your bun, except it's going to be a garlic bread flavor. It's going to be wonderful. All right, I've got the Weber kettle up to temp, nice and hot. Let's get this burger and this bun on here so we can go back inside and build our Italian sub hamburger, Italian burger sub, burger Italian sub. It's going to be good. The first thing I'm going to actually do is put the bun in here for just a few minutes to warm up so that all that butter and the garlic and everything in that spread can sort of melt into the, the bread. That way it'll be ready for us to toast it as soon as the burger's done. 
nice and hot in there, above 350, probably closer to 400. That bread's gonna be done in just a couple minutes. And then we'll move it to the side while we grill our burger. Okay, it's been a few minutes. I moved the bread aside. It'll just stay sort of warm right there until we're ready to grill it directly. Time to get our burger on. Oh, sizzling nicely, and I can smell that Italian sausage in there. Now, I'm not a big cheese person. My body doesn't really handle it that well. But at the end of this, I'm going to put a couple, actually one slice of provolone on this that's been halved, because i got to have some provolone on this. I love provolone on Italian subs. I'm going to throw the lid on here so we can keep that fire down. Can smell that Italian sausage cooking in there. I think we're about time to flip this burger. Let's see how we're doing here? Oh yeah. Oh look at that. That's beautiful. That's cooking perfectly. All right, I'm gonna put the lid back on once again to keep the fire down. We don't want to burn it too much. Check it in just about a minute or two. All right, let's check our burger. We want to make sure we're going to be at 160, so I'm just going to do a quick check. I know it's probably not there yet. No, still have ways to go. But we're going to turn it again to this side. That's a thick burger. <laughs> All right, lid back on. Remember, putting the lid on on a charcoal grill, one that's well sealed, will almost always quench any sort of flame that's coming up and charring your meat. It just knocks it right down because the smoke builds up, chokes off some of that oxygen, still allows the coals to burn, but you won't get those big, huge flare-ups. Unless you have a lot of grease, then that's hard to quit. But in this case, we're okay. All right, it's been a few minutes. I'm going to move the burger off the fire and start working on my bun and then we'll put the burger back on as needed. Oh, it's a good looking burger. Okay, so I need to open up my garlic bread bun here. Oh yeah, nice and melted, nice and ooey gooey. And this is not gonna take long. We don't wanna burn it, we just wanna toast it. Let's check that and see. A little bit more, a little bit more. All right, let's see the top, how it's looking. Well, you know, I still want it just a little bit more. Just a little bit more. Let's see this bottom again. That's what I want. Let's see here. That's good. That's what we want. That's how we want our bun. Okay, let's get our burger back over the coals and finish it up. Get down here and check the temperature. Near the edge, it's a little easier to Check so you don't melt the thermometer. Let's see how we're doing. Now 148, so we just got a little bit to go. I'm gonna say a couple minutes, it'll be done. Let's turn this over on there. Cover this up, let it go for a couple more minutes. Okay, let's get the lid off again and check it. The thing I wanna do is get my bun off here, two halves off. Another quick little check here. Yep, we're just about there. I'm gonna put my cheese on. Let's give it a chance to melt up a little bit. Looking good, we're getting close. All right, we are done. Let's get our Italian sub burger off here, inside so we can assemble our burger. All right, so we have the main components of our Italian sub burger here. Uh, it smells wonderful, the garlic bread, the Italian sausage in there. Now you can see we're a little short. Well, that's all right. It's garlic bread. You can eat the garlic bread without the burger. All right, let's start assembling this. So let's see first, get my patty on there. Then for toppings, I have a few different things that I like from Italian subs. One of them is pepperoncinis. 
love pepperoncinis. Some marinated artichoke hearts and some red onion. That's what I'm talking about. Now, if you wanted to go whole hog and do the meats and everything, the salami, the capicolas, you could put that on here. I just wanted to focus on the meat in the burger and add some of the other extra fixings. So let's top this off and dive in. Here we go. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> you see that? This is gonna be a messy one. I'm ready, are you ready? Let's see. First, I'm gonna get a bite of garlic bread because the ends, there's that little gap. Mmm, I love grilled garlic bread. But now it's time to get into the meat of this. That was a pun. Here we go. Mmm. Mmm. That mixture of Italian sausage and hamburger is just awesome. Mmm. That provolone and a stray pepperoncini. Oh. I'm getting to the artichoke heart. Here we go. Mmm. Mmm. That is so good. One of my weaknesses is marinated artichoke hearts. I love those things. Oh, wow. <laughs> Gotta tell you, turning your bun into garlic bread is a good thing when you're making something like this. This is just flavor on top of flavor on top of flavor. It is awesome. It's amazing. I'm gonna brand the Italian sub burger a success. Mm. When you're making burgers, it's fun to be experimental and try new things. I just came up with this idea the other day and thought, yeah, I'll give it a shot. And it worked. So don't be afraid to be experimental with burgers. They're very forgiving. As long as you cook it properly, you're going to get great flavor. Like I said, you could do whatever you want to this. Top it with even more Italian sub meats. I mean, that would be awesome too. But I like the meat and the Italian sausage in here. That, that combination of beef and Italian sausage is just perfect. One more bite. Mm. I hope you enjoyed this video. Feel free to check out the other videos on my channel and consider subscribing. And if you do, click that bell for notifications. Thank you all for watching. I hope you have a great day, and I'll see you again soon.